Good afternoon everybody and welcome back to our Facebook live. This is Rita, I hope to find you well, even if this moment is difficult for everybody, but we will drive you in the next weeks with other webinar and in the meantime, let's start with today's topic. As usual, before starting, I would like to greet my colleagues from the Shining 3D EMEA dental team. And a special greetings goes to Mr. Johan Ilut from the RNG Dental Laboratory, who will show us how to design a partial framework in ExoCAD. So let's move on to this topic. I will explain you very briefly the main features of our SLM-150. Just a few slides to give you an overview of the efficiency and productivity of our metal printer. After that, I will pass the microphone to Mr. Ilut, who will show us from scratch how to draw a partial framework in ExoCAD, and then move on to importing the file into our production software. I will then show you the printing phase of a partial, thanks to the help of my colleague in the headquarters, who recorded the printing phase. Last but not least, we will have time to dedicate it to Q&A, where we can depth what we are going to see. So let's start talking about our M150, which, uh, as many of you know, it's a metal powder bed fusion printer, which uses the fiber laser directly to melt a metal powder material, in this case, titanium powder or cobalt chrome. The strength point of our printer that makes it uh, one of the best in the market now is definitely the efficiency. In uh, just a bit over five hours, it managed to print the entire area of the platform, which I remember you to be 150 millimeters in diameter. For example, producing more than 220 crowns or 15 partial framework. Like all shining product, the principle of modularity is maintained, so that all maintenance or replacement operation can take place very quickly and without problems. Cost optimization allows you to consume less than one kilo of powder for 550 crown, and the easy software interface will help you to keep constantly monitoring the consumption level all, and all the other safety indicators. These are just some of the possible applications, as you can see, bridge, crowns, partial bars, and so on. And going into more detail on the main specification, as I said, the printing volume is 150 per 80 millimeter, where 150 represents the plate diameter. Scanning speed is 8 meters per second, and the thickness of the layer can be set from 20 to 50 microns. For the dental application, titanium or cobalt chrome powder can be used, and the use of argon or nitrogen gas will depend on this. Like all shining product, our printer is an open system that can be worked with, with the STL file and the e software version is included in bundle. We'll go deeper in a few minutes, but now it's time to give space to the partial framework module of ExoCAD. And uh, if you have any doubts or questions, please go ahead by leaving comments or sending private message. We will be happy to reply to you. I'm going to leave the microphone to Jan. Enjoy the webinar and talk to you later. Hello to everyone. My name is Ioan Ilut, I'm a dental technician from Cento, Italy, and today I will be showing you how I design a partial framework with ExoCAD. So, let's proceed with the partial design. Find the file, here is it. Okay. Okay, guys, the connection is a bit slow. Okay, here we are. So, first we have to find the insertion direction. Once you found it, click apply. Okay, here we have it. If the undercut is okay, click next. Okay. okay. 
now now we have to remove the wax where the class clip will be placed okay smooth it a little okay same with molar then we have to add some wax in the zones where the connector will be placed so at the end the insertion will be much easier Next, it's very simple, guys. Very, very simple. If you can hear me. Can you hear me guys? If you hear me, write it in the chat, please. Thank you. Now, we have to design the curve. The secret to design the curve is not to use a lot of points. Less points you use, better the line will be. Okay. Then we can adjust the point to make it more smooth and more likely to watch. Okay. You can add points or you can remove points. I have the point here. Okay. Here I have to follow the, the finish line design on the model previously. So if you don't have a finish line on the model, you can design it very quickly. So next, I have to design the mesh, not a lot of points, okay. have to adjust it a little, okay, the other one now. Now, okay. now we have to rotate the meshes in the right direction, so it's right now, next. connection is a bit slow guys so be patient okay next okay here we are so the connector the meshes are ready now we have to design the class Start with the tip. Okay.
the other part same thing very simple guys okay more or not Now we have to choose the type of clasp. I usually choose the pro charm because it's much easier to work it. Okay. Then I go to the settings. Okay. And I And I enlarge the final part. Enlarge the width. Okay. Same thing with the cannon. In this case, the class is very, very high, very up. I could use an interior class, but the pro charm, I like it better. Interior is it seems very thin for me you can use a pro charm and then you can go to the settings make it thinner or or, uh, or larger okay. You can adjust the thickness and the width. Once you have the clasps done, click next. We are going to close all the gaps and to draw the connectors, the small connector and the big connector. Gently okay. Okay. Now we have to put the rest, the closer rest. Okay. The 
moves, I think. Okay. Okay. Now we have everything done. The connector on the molar. Okay. A bit smaller. Okay. Next. Now we draw the finish line following the curve. Okay. Here we can incline the finish line. I like it like this. What do you think? Okay, it's okay for me. This one. Climb a little. Okay. Mm. A bit, another, another more. Now, Click next. And we have to smooth all the framework, all the zones where the wax. Okay. We can smooth, or we can smooth with adding a little of wax in certain zones Okay. Smooth very well all the zones, all the parts.
Now, a thing you can't do with the normal framework is to hide the blockout. So you can smooth all the parts you don't like. You can rotate the framework and smooth all the parts you want and the undercuts. Even from the inside part. Okay. Now we rotate the framework. We're going to work from the inside of the framework. A thing that's impossible when you design a normal framework. Okay, smooth all the zones where the framework could touch on the insertion. Okay, looks everything clear. a little a little more here Okay, show me the model. So, for me it's okay, guys. What do you think? This is it. If you want, in the export mode, you can add. It's a trick here. You can add your name. In export you can you can do a lot of things guys. When you will print it, you will have already your name on it. Okay. Now if you want to print it with a 3D printer, I have to put the support bars. I'll show you my own way to put the support bars. It will be ready even for cast. If you put the support bars like this, you will have more stability and uh, you will be sure that the framework will not deform. I put a support bar on each occlusal rest. The diameter I put it on three millimeters. Okay. I 
because two millimeters is a bit thick for me. Okay. Everything seems okay. We are ready. We click next and save for build. What do you think, guys? So, this is the finished framework. I hope you liked it. If you have some questions to ask me, please write it in the chat. I will respond to everyone. Thanks, thanks to everyone. And uh, see you next time. Thank you, have a nice day. Bye bye. Thanks, Jan, for your help. And now, since time is short, let's go directly to the import phase. We will show you in detail the printer interface software, but first, let's take a very quick step back on the preparation software that we offer together with the printer. Today, we will not see it in detail, but it's only to give you an idea of how it can be useful, especially for the definition of the support and to make it the last change on the file before printing. On other occasion or on request, we will provide you with more details. While now, we can go directly to the CAM software of our M150. So let's open the software. The first step will be to import the previous edited file into the preparation software. So with a very simple tool, we are going to place our previously designed partial on the printing platform, choosing the best position. And now once we have set all the parameters we want, including, for example, the thickness of the layers, we can move on into the next step, which is the printing phase. Now, as you can see, the software is preparing for the printing and we can step into the printing phase. As you can see, the ARM distributes the first layer of the power on the platform, which is the zeta axis. Once each layer has been distributed, each two-dimension slice of the part geometry is fused by selectively melting the powder. This is accomplished with a high powder fiber laser with 200 watt. The laser beam is directing to the X and Y direction with a high frequency scanning mirror. The laser energy is intense enough to permit the full melting of the particles to form a solid metal. And it can proceed layer by layer until the part is complete. Then, looking at the software interface, both remotely or uh, on the printer's touch screen, it will be possible to view all the indicators of pressure, temperature, humidity and gas injection, as well as the printing progress bar with an indication of the completed layers on the total ones. Now we, we can see just a few minutes of the printing phase. I'm going to speed up a bit uh, the video, why I would like to share with you some additional information. What we have seen today is the single laser version, but uh, we have also a dual laser version, where the combination of the two laser beams uh, allows to increase the production speed up to 30%. Shining 3D, as you know by now, has three uh, headquarters located all over the world. This will allow an easy and fast installation and support uh, 24 hours a day, thanks to the presence of our specialized engineer in the SLM system at each location. In the same way, delivery time for any spare parts such, such as uh, filters, metal powder or printing plates it's very fast uh, and during the training it will be shown how to replace them easily without the need of any type of support. 
Last but not least, the printers are compatible with different types of powder since it is an open system and our technician will support you in the best setting for each type. Now we have almost finished the, um, the printing phase. As you can see, 1,121 layers have been printed and a report document uh, has been released uh, with the full details of the whole process. And that's the result. The powder that has been moved from the feed cylinder to the build cylinder through the recorder can be stored on the powder collector. The partial can be easily cleaned of the residual powder, as my colleague is doing, by moving the zeta axis. During this process, you can uh, follow the safety rules and use the individual protection device included to obtain uh, the best result without problem. Once clean and removed the plate from the plate, uh, it can be um, ready to carry out the necessary post-production work. The post-production process will depend on the material, but also on the type of the model that has been printed. And even on this, uh, it will be possible to obtain specialized training from our engineers or ask them any suggest. And uh, basically, that's the, um, the final result. So what do you think? Now we will have time to, to your question. I'm going to take back the connection uh, with my colleagues uh, and we will be available for any comments um, or any question you would like to do. So please uh, feel free to write us um, as we are uh, at your complete disposal.